So nowadays games are looking better and better, but that's coming with a big downside. Games are getting harder and harder to run and minimum specs are getting higher and higher. Less and less people can play these cool games. But what if I said Nvidia has a perfect solution for that? And you would, who would have guessed, it loops back to AI. AI has been all the rage recently. CES 2024 had a lot of AI stuff, for example. And Nvidia for RTX series cards has got something called DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's on all RTX cards and is intended to help you run games. What it is, is it uses something called AI upscaling, where it's been trained on thousands and thousands of things. And then because obviously, Running a game at 4K is a lot harder than 1080p, for example, because it has more pixels it needs to fill in and more space it's got to cover. It's more to render. So what they do is they just render it at 1080p, use AI to upscale it up to 4K again. But that's got its downsides too, like, does it look bad? But I've had plenty of people say, oh, it looks bad, or oh, it doesn't even give that much of a boost. Well, that's what I want to find out today. Is the LSS good? Is it worth using? And why would you use it? And before I get too far into things, this is the PC that I'm going to be doing all the testing on. It has a Ryzen 5800X, 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 3600 megahertz, and the star of the show, an ASUS Dual RTX 4060 Ti, which means it has access to both DLSS 2 and 3, as well as 3.5 and is overall a good card with the LSS but is also mid-range which is kind of perfect for testing on this and actually I'm in post now and it's dawned on me I never talked about the monitor I'm using this is an ASUS monitor it's at 160 hertz at the moment overclocked to that it is 1440p everything that is here the monitor is rendering up to 1440p which it's either rendered at or upscaled to 1440p. But here's what Nvidia themselves have to say as to what DLSS is. It talks about how DLSS is a revolutionary breakthrough in AI graphics, uses the tensor cores, and it improves image quality. Now there are DL there is DLSS 2 and DLSS 3. 3.5 is kind of its own thing. The main one that we're actually testing in this video is DLSS 2, but I will be touching on and talking about DLSS 3. DLSS 2 has some major features like ray reconstruction, which makes it easier for your GPU to do ray tracing, and of course DLSS super resolution, which basically renders Rendering a low resolution is a lot easier than rendering a high one. Rendering 1080p is going to be a lot easier than 4K. What this does is makes the GPU render at 1080p for example, or whatever resolution you choose, and then uses AI and those tensor cores to then scale it up to whatever resolution your monitor is. It's available on a lot of games, it's trained off of many things, and it generally makes it easier for your GPU to run something, which will then boost your FPS while trying to maintain around the same level of quality and image quality. Now that you understand DLSS 2 at least, I'm going to be showing you two major games, being Baldur's Gate 3, as well as the 2018 God of War. Both of them are DLSS compatible, and I'm going to show you both gameplay and cutscenes, and show you the performance and get your opinion. And here we have our Baldur's Gate for testing with DLSS. Clearly with DLSS off, we're going to start with a cutscene. It's running at around 100 FPS, that's so fluctuating a little bit. Averaging at about 100 though. And moving on to quality, it's already jumped up massively to 140 to 120 maybe. Massive jumps already, all the way up to quality. Jumping again down to balanced, it's jumping again to 150. That's one thing. The further it gets into DLSS, the benefits are getting lower and lower, even though the resolution is also getting lower and lower. As with the performance, it's honestly not much different to balanced. It's crazy how little of a difference it made. Moving into the gameplay, it tells a very similar story. When DLSS is off, the FPS doesn't jump. And honestly, in my opinion, DLSS has not been very visible. If you're really looking for it, you can probably tell in some of these gameplay clips and some of the cutscenes, but you had to be really looking for it so far, in my eyes at least. This is all being rendered at 1440p as said, or at least upscaled to 1440p, and it's just not that noticeable in my opinion. But I wanted to see if anyone else could notice it, and so I've got two cutscenes, one on performance DLSS, one on no DLSS, and I want you to try and figure out which one's DLSS. Obviously, I've got two clips here. I have made it a little bit more difficult because they've been scaled down a bit and look more condensed down, which will make it more difficult to pick out the upscaled one. But there are still a few signs. But just the fact that looking at the two, it's hard to tell which one's which, in my opinion, is wickedly impressive. NVIDIA has really outdone themselves. And it is insane that one of these have been upscaled by AI and one of these just flat out haven't. 
and it's enough that when taken aback you can't really tell the difference. I think that is pretty impressive, pretty crazy. If you squint, I reckon there are signs to which one's which, and you can tell which one's which. And I've put it up on screen now for which one was DLSS, but it's pretty impressive still. Now moving on to God of War, which is going to be very interesting considering God of War was heavily used in the NVIDIA DLSS advertising. When it's off, my GPU was sitting around 70 FPS, um, but then quality immediately goes up to 100. Initially turning it on usually makes a really big difference and then has diminishing returns after that. But we do start to slowly see an issue the further in we get, an issue that isn't really thought about. The fact that the CPU is still not DLSS. The NVIDIA graphics card will get a massive boost from DLSS now, but the last two clips, you'll see the CPU are at 100% and the CPU is the bottleneck because most of these systems have been configured with the CPU and GPU together in mind, which this system works very well together with the CPU and GPU together. But already the GPU is slightly ahead of the Ryzen 5800X, and so the CPU very slowly starts to become bottlenecked, and so you slowly get to the point where it's just not helping very much. But it is still going to be helpful DLSS in general. I've got some gameplay on here now, and it goes up from 60 to close to 100 towards the end. It's crazy benefits. And I've also, for this one, left in the settings. Because, of course, God of War, unlike Baldur's Gate, will actually tell you what resolution it's using. And all games we, that I have tested were on ultra settings. Both Baldur's Gate, God of War, and the last game that I'm going to be showing off a little bit later. But showing off here that it's not really making a huge amount of difference. It's all... Once you get past that balance to performance type, the CPU is becoming the bottleneck. I wish I had a far more powerful CPU just to swap in, just to see if it could make a bigger difference. But sadly, I just don't have the money. I don't make money off of this channel yet. But it will prove interesting for future system building, because if you system build in the future with DLSS in mind, it could, it could prove to show that there will be a lot more GPUs that are with far higher end CPUs than they normally will would be because DLSS just brings them up towards the CPU's proper range, and if it's built with that in mind, could make some very interesting and very impressive PCs. But the CPU is definitely the bottleneck by the end of it. But I'm also getting almost double FPS by the time I'm using DLSS Ultra Performance. And the fact that it's going from 480p to 1440 is really oppressive in my opinion and kinda crazy. Though I was talking about a CPU bottleneck, in fairness, I don't have a capture card hooked up to this. This is all running off of uh, Streamlabs recording the screen, which is using software encoding, because I didn't want to affect the GPU, but that is also going to affect the CPU, because now it has to go and do all the encoding. Uh, it probably, in, in reality, would have been better to record on NVENC, if anything. But with that in mind, let's move into the comparisons like we did for Baldur's Gate. Now with a God of War cutscene, Again, DLSS is turned on for one of these, and is on ultra performance mode. And the fact that, admittedly, yes, it is scaled down, which is going to make it harder to tell, and the frame rate is locked to 60 for this video. At the same time, the fact that it's still hard to tell, and it's coming up from 480p to 1440, is, thinking about those numbers is crazy to me. It's wildly impressive what this GPU and NVIDIA DLSS can do in general. Here is which one was DLSS, but did you pick it at all? How many of these comparisons did you pick? Now you've seen that, let's go into DLSS 3. Both the games I've already shown you are on DLSS 2. Also did not use RTX at all, ray tracing. And already their results were very impressive. And so I want to show off DLSS 3, which has all the same resolution stuff as DLSS 2, but now also has frame generation. We're basically because the RTX 40 series, which this is, I'm using a 4060 Ti, as I've said, has the optical flow accelerator, it uses AI again to insert AI generated frames entirely to boost your FPS on top of AI upscaling. I'm going to be running Portal RTX here because it's got full ray tracing, DLSS 3 compatible, and comparing the results. Let's get into that. Here is Portal with RTX. Admittedly, Portal with RTX is hard to run because it's got full true ray tracing. It's got pretty high graphics, and this is set to ultra graphics as well. But the for some reason, the software doesn't like frame rate counters, so I had to use the inbuilt one. Which 
which is really small up the top right corner, but it was averaging between 10 and 15 FPS, which really is not a lot, and it just didn't run very well at all in reality, and just the entire time I was playing was framey, had issues, but then... If we jump to DLSS 3, not only did it run far smoother, it, the frame rate was closer to 30, and I don't even know if that counts the AI put in frames. I don't know if it counts in that rendering, but it was, looked massively smooth. It looked great. It didn't look any worse with the upscaling either. That's been a pretty consistent factor. I've been pretty impressed with the upscaling. There were a few little small things with DLSS 3, admittedly, like when I would look at something that was moving uh, with the AI frames, you could on occasion see things like on the clock, you could see where the times were moving and changing as the AI wouldn't know that it was just meant to switch immediately and would fill in frames there. But for what it is, it was really impressive. And the fact that it had full ray tracing and helped with that even, it, the game looked incredible, it felt incredible to play still, and was just really impressive in my opinion, especially without DLSS. At one point, my portal crashed by stepping on a button, which admittedly might not be the graphics card's fault, but I had no such issues with DLSS 3. And so while clearly it's not perfect, it looks pretty good, it boosts your FPS a fair bit, and has plenty of upside. But you'll also notice in almost all of the games, except for maybe Portal with RTX, but that's its own thing, the games were already running pretty well. Why would you use DLSS? Well, I've already got an RTX 4060 Ti, which is clearly a pretty powerful card, even though it is only a mid-range 40 series. But, in my opinion, the best benefit from DLSS will be when it trickles down. As you know, eventually, what is today's new card, as newer cards will come out will slowly trickle down and almost everyone will have it and if everyone's got something like DLSS I almost see it more like future proofing than anything because some of the RTX cards something like the 3050 for example especially the mobile edition as I myself daily drive this for both work and gaming laptop which has an RTX card but it's a mobile 3050 and it has 8 gigs of VRAM and is by no means the fastest graphics card out there but what it does have is DLSS and so while sure maybe something like a 4090 or 4080 even a 3090 might not need DLSS right now as RTX trickles down and everyone seems to have it it's gonna be great for the future and hey and honestly even on my 4060 ti then i've seen those results i'm gonna start using at least a light amount of dlss for some of my game but anyway i really hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a bit from it if you did please like and subscribe i'm a small channel would help out a ton and comment what your current graphics card is and do you use dlss on it i really hope this was informative and taught you something and i hope to see you in the next one Bye bye